Hello, and welcome to another episode. My name is Tamir, and have I got some big news for you. My house is gone. Guys, there's nothing to worry about. I'm still here in my own house. I didn't actually lose it like I mentioned earlier. But the reason for that clip was I now have a camera set up that's brand new that I'm very excited about. With this new camera setup, I can now shoot outdoor videos. So for those of you that are tired of seeing me sit on my couch with some strange painting in the background and watching me talk about the car business and car salesmen and car dealerships and why they act the way that they do, now you'll see me outside. The previous camera that I was using was a Canon Rebel T5, which one of the biggest flaws of that camera is it does not have an external microphone jack, so I could only rely on the camera's internal mic to record. So that really left my options limited to just recording inside my house. But now we have a Canon Rebel T7i, which does have an external microphone jack, and the kit that we purchased also came with a Rode microphone that attaches right into the camera, and it also has a flip screen, and it has an app so I can basically shoot myself. So with this new camera setup, I'm still gonna be making the videos like I have been where I'm sitting here and I talk about different aspects about car dealerships and car salesmen and the car sales process and why it is the way that it is, but I'm going to be expanding a little bit. I'm gonna start doing some more videos outdoors, including at certain dealerships and with certain subscribers' cars. So if you have a car that's interesting and at one point in its life was sale-proof, I'm interested in talking to you. And for those of you that actually prefer to see me sitting on my couch with some strange painting in the background, if you want that, feel free to leave a comment in my comment section below. Guys, hello, and welcome to another episode. My name is Tamir, and for those of you that have been following for some time, know that I sell cars and I finance them, and I talk about car dealerships, and the car sales process, and car salesmen, and why they act the way that they do. And today, I am posting by far my most controversial video yet. Now, this video is not intended to hurt anybody's feelings. However, bruised egos are an unfortunate and inevitable side effect of watching YouTube videos. Especially watching YouTube videos on a channel like mine, which recounts my personal experience with the most hated job in America. Car sales. That being said, before the main content of this video, I'm giving you two choices. You can take the first choice, which is you swipe down and right and quit out of the video. You take the second choice, which is scroll down to below the screen, there's a red box that says subscribe, click on it, and I will show you the truth that you've been waiting for. Another pretty big thing that happened was this morning I had my very first interview with another YouTuber. He is local in the Seattle area and his channel is called Mike Reviews It All. So he and I had a good hour and a half conversation about the car business and why the car sales process has many different buyers pulling their hairs out of their scalps. I've left a link to his channel below in my description. You should feel free to check it out after you're done watching this video. One of the questions that he asked me, which I didn't get a chance to fully answer, was why is it that some dealerships are so open to negotiating and why others are not as open to negotiating? In a couple of previous videos, I covered that negotiation is one of the most expected practices during the car sales process by both the buyers and the salespeople, and I even covered some of the best and some of the worst negotiating strategies when purchasing a vehicle. There are, however, a couple of select times when it is never appropriate to negotiate with the car dealership. It will only cause you to pull your hair out even more. And by the way, if at any point in this video you feel deeply hurt by my opinion, it is never too late to swipe down and to the right to quit out of the video. But let's face it, you're here for a reason, so might as well watch the whole thing, right? The first circumstance when it is never appropriate to negotiate with a car dealership is if you have not seen or driven the vehicle that you're considering purchasing. All too often, there are so many clients that want to completely negotiate the deal before they drive the vehicle or see the vehicle. 
In a previous video, I mentioned that one of the most imperative steps of the car purchase process is to look at the vehicle and drive it before you make an offer on it because what happens if you don't like the vehicle? And that's exactly the reason why this step is on the list. It'll save yourself hours and hours of time. Now let's say best case scenario where you have actually physically seen a vehicle and driven a vehicle that's like it and you found another one, especially in the used market, but you have not driven the vehicle yet. Oftentimes people will make an offer on the vehicle without seeing it just based off of general market conditions, but there could be some underlying issue that either completely takes you out of the market or actually increases the value of that vehicle. So without knowing those, it's difficult to make an offer that's truly based off of the circumstances. So that being said, it's never appropriate to negotiate with the dealership before you've physically seen or driven the vehicle. You have to take a look at it in person and make an offer based off of its condition and its circumstance. The next circumstance when it's never appropriate to negotiate with the car dealership is when the vehicle is already the lowest priced example in your market area. What this means is if you're taking a look at a vehicle and like vehicles, and it's already far below any guide such as Kelly Blue Book or NADA or even Mannheim Auto Auction, chances are very likely that the dealership is already taking a pretty big loss to sell that vehicle. This is especially true for used cars, but it's also true for new cars as well. Those third-party guides that I have just mentioned are generally the best guides for gauging whether a deal is a good deal or a bad deal. So if a deal is already an exceptional deal and there's nothing physically wrong with the vehicle or wrong with its circumstances, why would you negotiate more with the dealership, just upset them, and end up risking losing the car? The next circumstance when it's not appropriate to negotiate with a car dealership is when the vehicle you're looking at is fresh in inventory. What this means is this is a vehicle that is fresh off of the truck if you're looking at brand new cars or it just was acquired on trade or from the auction if it's a used vehicle. The reason it's not appropriate to negotiate on these vehicles is because they just acquired the vehicle and because it's a fresh and new listing, that's the one that they get the most interest from online or in newspapers or on the radio or in their TV ads. When there's that much interest in a vehicle, the dealership has every right to ask for more profit for that vehicle. Now, if that vehicle does end up sitting around for a little bit, or if the vehicle is overpriced to begin with, then it's okay to negotiate on the vehicle. But if it's a vehicle that's only been in stock for a couple of hours, chances are pretty unlikely that they're going to move on their pricing. The next circumstance when it's not appropriate to negotiate with the car dealership is when the vehicle is irreplaceable. Let's say the dealership has some particular rare configuration of a vehicle that is extremely sought after. If you are trying to negotiate with the dealership, it better be based on something that is substantial. Otherwise, if there's no substantiated evidence, such as similar vehicles in its market area, then the dealership has every right to ask pretty much whatever they want for that vehicle. The final circumstance when it's never appropriate to negotiate with the car dealership is after you've already come to terms on a vehicle. I can't tell you how many times this has happened over my career, and I know many, many other car buyers that have had this happen as well. Part of the reason why this happens is because the buyer feels like they have not gotten full disclosure from the dealership about the circumstances of the transaction. Most larger dealerships like my own are very, very full disclosure when it comes to all the circumstances of a transaction. So whenever we come to terms on a vehicle and then something else comes up after we've come to terms, that's one way to kill a deal really quickly. Do you guys like the automotive content that I'm posting? If you do, please be sure to, after this video, click the little red box that says subscribe outside the video screen and be sure to click the bell notification so you get a friendly reminder every week that I post a video. My name is Tamir. And until next time.